worship the Almighty God today. We are coming to you from Mount Carmel. We are here to pay a visit God has been showing his mercy in answering prayers by fire. And we are believing God that today, like never before, is going to answer your prayers by fire. We give you all the glory. Our prayers by fire. We worship you. We thank you for all you've done for us since the beginning of this year. We thank you for January. We thank you for February. We thank you for March. We thank you for April. We thank you for May. We thank you for June. And now, thank you for bringing us to July. Thank you for bringing us to the second half of this year. Father, we give you all glory, we give you all honor. Particularly as we know that this seventh month of the year, you are going to perfect everything that pertains to every member of our families. Thank you because we know you will take care of fathers, you will take care of mothers, you will take care of children, you will take care of grandchildren, you will take care of even great grandchildren. We give you all glory, we give you all honor. We ask that you please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, today we are asking that in the lives of all your children all over the world, you will do something special, you will do something new. You answer all our prayers by fire, even like you did. When Elijah called on you on Mount Carmel thousands of years ago, you will repeat the same thing today. Father, may your name forever be glorified. And Father, we are committing to your care all your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and in the giving of their offerings. We pray that this month, you will perfect their testimonies, that will put an end to poverty in their lives, and you will glorify your holy name. Thank you, almighty God, even as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Today, as we reach out to you from Mount Carmel in Ifewara. We want you to prophesy to your neighbor and tell him or her, God will answer your prayers by fire today. Today, we've been asked to speak on years of God. In other words, inheritors of God. We will be taking our text from 
Romans chapter 8. And we'll be reading from verse 14 to 17. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons there stands for children. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit is a bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then hears, hears of God, and joint hears with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Inheritance can come from God himself. Inheritance can come from a spiritual father. Inheritance can come from a biological father. Let us start with the biological father. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, from verse 15 to 17, Deuteronomy 21, from verse 15 to 17, the Bible tells us that when a man is about to share his material blessings among his children, then he should give double portion to the firstborn. In other words, children are to get inheritance from their biological parents. And the firstborn is to get double. In addition to material blessings or material things, the biological father can also give something to his son in the spiritual realm. For example, in Genesis 27, if you read the story from verse 1 to 33, Genesis 27 from verse 1 to 33, Isaac blessed Jacob. And he told Esau, when Esau came back from hunting and discovered that Jacob was already blessed. Isaac said, I have blessed him, and he will surely be blessed. Those of you who had had the opportunity of being blessed by your biological parents, I congratulate you because their blessings will last which is why you should make sure, particularly you young ones, make sure you take good care of your parents. Because if they bless you, you will be blessed. I've said it before, that what I am today, I am by the grace of God and the blessings of my mom. Any time I please her, when I was a little kid, any time I did something special for her, she had this prayer she always prayed for me. She would say, you this boy, you will call one person and 200 will answer. Of course, I didn't know the meaning of that, how could I call one person and 200 people will answer? 
But today, if we have a minister's conference, and I say, hey, pastor, come. And I didn't mention the name of the pastor. By the grace of God, more than 200 pastors will come running. If you have been blessed by your parents, congratulations. And I will appeal to you, all of you who have parents, continue to take good care of them so that they can continue to pronounce blessings on, on you. When Isaac blessed Jacob, the final result of it, as you will discover in Genesis chapter 30, from verse 31 to 43, Genesis 30, from verse 31 to 43, the result was that Jacob became exceedingly great. My prayer for all of you listening to me today is that by the special grace of the Almighty God, you will all become exceedingly great. And then we move to spiritual dad. When we talk about spiritual dad, we are talking about someone that for one reason or the other, God has placed over you to guide you in spiritual matters. And when you serve such a person, anytime you have the opportunity to request anything from him, ask him to bless you. Because when your spiritual father blesses you, the almighty God will back it up fully. I just give you one example. Second Kings chapter two, from verse nine to 15. Second Kings chapter two, from verse nine to 15. When Elijah was about to depart to heaven, he asked Elisha, what can I do for you before I be taken away from you? Elisha did not ask for money. Elisha didn't ask for anything material. He knew that Elijah is his spiritual father. So he asked for something spiritual something that money cannot buy. He said, ah, my father, what I want is a double portion of your spirit. That anointing that you carry, that anointing that can bring down fire from heaven anytime you command, I want a double portion. Now, when he said, I want a double portion, he was asking for that blessing that can be given to the firstborn. And you know, Elijah never got married. And so Elisha was saying, I'm your firstborn. I want a double portion. You know the end of the story. Elijah told him, what you have asked for is beyond any human being to give. However, I will commit God on your behalf that if you see me when I'm being taken away from you, you will get what you ask for. And Elisha saw him, and he got a double portion of the Spirit. I'm praying for every one of you today who truly call me your daddy. Everything that you see in me that you know is from God, that you want for yourself, you receive in Jesus' name. And then we move on to God himself. When it comes to what you can inherit from God, the blessings you can get from God, oh, they include unlimited material wealth. Why? Because Genesis 17 verse 1, Genesis 17 verse 1 says, our God is Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. There's nothing you can ask from him that he hasn't got more than you can ever handle. 
Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 says, Silver is his, gold is his own true. Psalm 50 verse 9 to 10. Psalm 59 to 10 tells us that even the cattle upon a thousand hills, they belong to this our God. Psalm 24 verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1 tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In other words, your Father in heaven controls silver, controls gold, controls oil, controls everything. So if you ask him for anything, he can give you more than sufficient. But far, far more important than anything material is that the almighty God can give you a spiritual blessing that is beyond even human comprehension. For example, one of the inheritance that we get from God is Jesus Christ himself. John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That all you have to do is receive him. And you will have eternal life. And then the Bible now added, in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, Romans 8, 32, that because he had given us his son, Jesus Christ, there is nothing else that he cannot give us together with him. In other words, because he has given us Jesus Christ, anything else you can imagine, ask for it, and the Almighty God will make it available to you. And then we'll move on to the fact that the Bible says that we are joined here with Christ. That means whatever Christ has, you too, as a heir of God, can have the same. For example, in Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 11, Philippians 2, from verse 9 to 11, the Bible tells us that God has given Jesus Christ a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every name should bow. Now, you are joined here with Jesus Christ. So you also have access to that name that is above every other name. So that when you call the name of Jesus Christ, all knees also will bow to you. Now, that's why Jesus Christ himself said in Mark chapter 16, from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, 17 to 18, Jesus Christ himself said, if in my name, if you just believe, then in my name, you can cast out demons. In my name, you can heal the sick. In my name, even if you accidentally eat or drink poison, it will not poison, it will not affect you in any way whatsoever. So being a hearer of God entitles you to that name that's above every other name, and with that name you can do marvelous things. In fact, there's hardly anything that you want to achieve that you cannot achieve because of the name of Jesus. However, we come to one crucial point. Who can be the heir of a man? According to John chapter 8, verse 35, John 8, 35, it must be someone who is a son, a child. Inheritance is not for servants. People work in a company and they are paid their wages. At the end of the day, when the owner of the company dies, it is not the workers who will inherit the company. It is the children of the founder, the children of the owner. Now the problem then is 
How are we sure you are a hearer of God? It is simple. It's not you just saying, I am a child of God. It is does God recognize you as one of his children? You see, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 says, The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. So if I ask today, how many of you listening to me are children of God? Ah, it's most likely every hand will go up. But God knows those who are his own children. As a matter of fact, even the devil knows those who are God's children. He knows pretenders. He knows those who will want to use the name of Jesus Christ without being children of the Almighty God. In Acts chapter 19, for example, from verse 11 to 17, Acts 19, 11 to 17, the Bible tells us that God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul. And then there were some vagabonds, some people who have no connections at all with Jesus Christ. And then they saw a man who was possessed of demons. And they said, well, we know what Paul was doing. He was using the name of Jesus. And we, were being, we saw him casting out demons. Even his handkerchiefs were so anointed that uh, demons flee. So they went to this madman and said, we command you in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, not the one we know, not the one we belong to. But we've seen the name being used. We command you, demon, come out of this man. Remember what the devil said? He said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? You remember the result? The Bible says he pounds on them, beat them, tore their clothes. Because the, the devil himself knows who is a true child of God. And so I'm going to appeal to you, those of you who come to church, who shout hallelujah, who sing like we sing, and who want to use the name of Jesus Christ without belonging to him, you might be asking for trouble. The name of Jesus Christ is very powerful, but it belongs only to those who are true children of God. And I will tell you one or two little stories, and it will be time to pray. Several years ago, in a village not too far away from where I am standing now, there was a very wealthy man. And uh, well, he had more than one wife. And then there were some people who were messing around with his wives. And quite a few of those were very, very powerful people in the occult. So the rich man didn't want to die. And he, anyone that they said, this is your child, he said, all right, all right. After all, she was born by my wife. Paid their school fees, did everything. Then he died. And it was time to read his will. And all the children gathered together to hear what and what he has given unto them. And the man started the will by saying, so and so is not my child. 
he shall have no part or lot in my inheritance. So and so is not my child. And one by one, those people he mentioned left the room in shame. I will tell you another story. And this is about African kings in the past. At least I know of those in Nigeria. They too used to have many wives. And uh, because the wives are so many, some very powerful chiefs, the head uh, of the army, the chief uh, Habalis, etc., etc., they always assist the king to minister to his wives. And the king will know and won't say anything. Anyone born in the palace is a king, is a, is a, is a prince, or a princess. The king won't say a thing because he depends on all these people who have been ministering to his wife. He depends on them for the time of war, etc., etc. But when one king comes to visit another king, the king will begin to introduce the children in the palace. To the king, he knows that the other, the visiting king, they, they had the same kind of problem he had. And so the children will begin to come. And the king, one king will say to the other king, this is Prince Ojo. The other king will nod his head. Because if you are born in the palace, <laughs> you're a prince. This is Princess Aina. The other king will not decide. He understands. He knows that the king is saying, I don't know his father. But he was born in the palace. I don't know his father. Someone did the job. And then one of the children will call, and the king will say to the other king, Ah, this is my son. He won't call him a prince. He won't call her a princess. He will say, this is my son. <laughs> On the last day, when we get to the gate of heaven, the almighty God is going to say, oh, this fellow used to go to church. He calls himself a Christian, but it's not my own. This morning, I want you to think very deeply. What will God say about me on the last day? Will he just call me, oh, one of those who go to church? Or will he say, this is my son and this is my daughter? Because only those who are his will be his heirs. So before it is too late, if you have not genuinely surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, if you are not one of his, take a decision this morning. And so I'm going to give you four, what shall I say, few seconds. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, before I count up to four, go before the altar. Go and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Let the pastor pray for you. Let the congregation join the pastor in crying to God for you so that your soul can be saved, so that you can become a true child of the living God so you can become a hearer of God and a joint here with Jesus Christ. I'm counting now. One. I can't see you, but God is watching over you. He knows when you are truly surrendering your life to him. He knows when you are going forward just for a pretense. If you are he here, knows you want your to heart. give your life to Christ. Two. You want to get an inheritance. 
of the come Lord to him Almighty, now please come to the before altar before it is too late. As daddy is calling you I've unto the to Lord, him, he made unto a the promise. King of Kings, it does not matter how many years me, you've been in church. I will no wise cast out. Three. Start coming wherever you may be. Come to him. Whether the gallery it doesn't or matter downstairs. how terrible your past had been. If you come to him today, he will save your soul and give you a brand new beginning and you become a member of the family of God. Now, those of God. you who have come forward, if you want to the join altar, the brother, you the way, if you are there, you want to, to join the now. brother, please come forward say, now. God Almighty, please save my soul. Make me a member of your family. I want to be a child of the living God. I want to be a hearer of God. Cry to him. And please, all the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters. Brother, begin Let to us ask intercede the Lord to for be them with you. that the one who saved our own souls, we save their souls also. Go ahead. Call on him now. And the Almighty God will answer our prayers today by fire. Let us pray. My Father and my God, once again, I want to thank you. I give you all glory and honor for giving me an opportunity to stand again on this holy ground and to pray first and foremost for all these people who have responded to the altar call. Every one of them, Father, have mercy on them, save their souls, write their names in the book of life, let your blood wash away their sins, receive them into the family of God, you say, everyone who will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you give the power to become children of God. Give these people power to become children of God so they can become heirs of the Almighty. And from now on, Father, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire so that your name will be glorified. Thank you, Almighty God. And please, Lord, your children are going to be thanking you this morning. And after thanking you, they'll be asking you for something big. I'm asking that today you answer every prayer by fire, that there be mighty testimonies as a result of this service of this morning. Thank you, my Father and my God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ, I rejoice with you because now you have become children of God. Now you can become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I would love to know more about you so I can continue to pray for you. So the counselors will attend to you. They will collect your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you as a servant of the living God, that from now on, I'll be praying for you. But before you go, join the others now, even as they pray. And I'm calling all of us who are seated to stand up and cry unto the Almighty God and say, Father, you are my Father. Don't let me ever become a bastard. Go ahead, cry unto the Almighty God, and he will grant your request. God bless you. Go ahead, call on him now so that you can begin to enjoy the benefits of true children of the living God. Praise the Lord.